Welcome in. It's CBV Reviews Summer Session. Summer something. Yeah, well, we're working on the name, um, but Summer Sessions, we'll keep it at that for now. I am your humble host, Brendan Hodges. Usually you see me on our flagship podcast, The Review. Uh, in the middle of an off-season break with that right now, we're putting things together for season two, lining up some uh, guests, hopefully, um, if they uh, get back to us soon enough. And uh, we're planning to bring some more content to you guys starting this fall for today though we are actually covering something completely different not about the review we're actually looking towards the professional ranks of basketball here in the states we're looking at the nba and if you have been if you've been under a rock the last couple of days we started this bracket i guess we could say on june 1st top draft classes uh, NBA draft classes in tandem with NBA draft central. They're a great page on uh, Instagram, all social medias, go check them out. They have been great throughout this whole process. And I am here with uh, the boss man who has uh, decided he likes a lot more to come to these things rather than the actual review episodes because he gets shredded um, both in the comments and by me for his lackluster performances in um, trivia and various other things. His name is Matt Bajinski. He is here. We are going over the final four of this bracket challenge per se for NBA draft classes. For those of you who, again, are only tuning into this right now, the final four are the draft classes of 1984, 1987, 2003, and 1996. And uh, we're only going to be here for like 20, 30 minutes, just going to discuss all four of these draft classes, who we project will probably be. And the last two, one of whom is pretty much set right now because of one player. Uh, the other ones are a little bit closer, but still, it's like yeah, one player is carrying the load. We'll go ahead and start with uh, that first matchup of 1984 and 1987. And most people think, oh, 1984 is draft class. Who came out of that? Well, it obviously, you have the likes of the GOAT, um, John Stockton, obviously, <laughs> um, in that 1984 draft class. Uh, also, Mr. Guarantee, Charles Barkley, who has been ripped about as much as Matt Majinski has on this uh, this media outlet. Uh, Sam Perkins, Akeem Olajuwon, and then, you know, just a guy named Michael Jordan. It, it, no one knows what he was. He was nothing special. Um, they go up against the 1987 draft class, which uh, as of right now, this moment, they are getting... <laughs> Uh, it's not even close. 1984 is 94% of the vote. Um, 1987, uh, the Admiral, Scotty Pippen, Reggie Miller, uh, Kevin Johnson, Horace Grant, but they, they have 6% of the vote. But uh, we're going to give them some love here. And uh, Matt, your take on the 1987's draft class and how they have just wandered into a buzzsaw that is the uh, 1984 draft class. Yeah, and I almost feel bad for 1987, and they, they were the only – so far it's been all chalk um, throughout. We started with 16, 16 draft classes, and it's been all chalk. I mean, the top eight seeds went through the first round, and the four-versus-five matchup was the only one that was semi-close, and I'm going to pull that one up real quick just so the viewers know what went down in that. Um, again, NBA Draft Central's really had the bulk of the votes. We've been getting about 400, 500 votes um, – on CBB review, NBA Draft Central has been huge. They've had over a thousand votes on Instagram alone. The five seed draft class was 1998. That was Dirk Nowitzki, Paul Pierce, Vince Carter, Anton Jameson, and Rashard Lewis. That was they got beat by David Robinson, Scotty Pippen, Reggie Miller, Kevin Johnson, and Horace Grant. Again, with my personal page, I was voting. I had um, five seed. I had 1998 in that. I just think Dirk Pierce Carter. I just got to shout them out. But when you look at 1987, I think you have a draft class that right up there, you, you see that Scotty Pippen name, a guy that was kind of the second piece in those Chicago Bulls, some of those championship teams. You see Reggie Miller. He was the three-point king for quite some time. And David Robinson, the guy that came in from Navy and really helped propel that San Antonio Spurs franchise into one of the best franchises, one of the lengthiest runs in professional sports history. Um, you know, just a couple of years ago was their first time not making the playoffs in however long. And then you see Kevin Johnson, the guy that that obviously had some success, you know, was an all-star, was an all-NBA. And then Horace Grant, I feel like, is when that draft class goes down. You're kind of searching for someone who had good seasons, but certainly not anyone 
who you're going to look at and, and be like, okay, this is a guy. I mean, he didn't make the Hall of Fame. I mean, right there you have, um, you know, you look at this, this draft class, you only have the three Hall of Famers, and that's that. Going past it, I would like to note out that we, we didn't choose more than five players just for graphic purposes. Um, you know, some numbers are just better than others to highlight. We said, let's choose the best five from each draft class. Some of the other guys in this draft class were Mark Jackson, Reggie Lewis, um, and then I'm going to pronounce this name totally wrong, but Sarunas Marcialonis. And three of those guys also were all-stars at least once in their career or, or made a little bit of an impact in their NBA careers. So shout out to the 1987 draft class, but the road's going to end here most likely. Again, voting continues through tonight, and then we'll have the championship on Monday. Also, David Robinson, one of the best sons around. Justin Robinson, probably not going to play in the NBA, but had one of the better games by a unknown um, in probably Duke basketball history. Uh, that was against North Carolina the second time around, right before COVID. Um, had like 15 points, like 12 rebounds and whatever. Got his second ever like post-game interview or something like that. They made a joke about that on the telecast. But we move into the 1984 draft class now. Um, it, they have rolled, and I mean rolled through the competition, most likely because of MJ. But you still have some pretty good names in there. Obviously, you have Akeem. You have Charles Barkley. You have John Stockton. Guys who are well-known, even by our generation. We didn't necessarily watch all of these guys play because we either weren't alive or we were too young to realize how great the NBA is. Um but now that we've had the last dance, we see Charles Barkley on uh, inside the NBA on TNT getting absolutely roasted and guaranteeing ridiculous things that never seem to happen. Uh, it's a draft class that bar none is the cream of the crop when it comes to telling the story of the NBA. Yeah, I think that this draft class is so good. And it was really the first draft class where you see a legend, the the GOAT, one of the GOATs, however you want to describe him, Michael Jordan's one of the top two, if not the best player in NBA history. You look at Hakeem Olajuwon, a guy that's top 15 in scoring in NBA history. Charles Barkley, to me, is the most underrated player. I actually like him on air a lot. I think he has a lot of great things to say. Um, and I feel like, however, some of those things that he says wrong, people have started to diminish how great he was as a basketball player. That guy was a baller. And then you look at the rest of the draft class. And I, again, I can't forget John Stockton. I mean, that was a guy that all-time NBA assist leader might not ever be broken. I don't care how many of these guys are padding those assists and getting their numbers up. John Stockton did it at a high, high level for a long, long time. And then, you know, I chose to put Sam Perkins on there. Um, you know, I could have gone with Kevin Willis. Prob probably could have gone with him instead. Alvin Robertson. Those are guys who made all-star teams and all-NBA teams. And then it got the second round wasn't a lot. Oscar Schmidt, a guy that was drafted by the New Jersey Nets out of Brazil, um, was another guy who made an all-star appearance. But I think you look at that draft class and you see those top four players. I don't know if any other draft class in the history of the NBA has four players like that where you have a GOAT, you have two of the all-time greats in scores, and you have an all-time assist leader and – I'm saying this off the top of my head. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm willing enough to bet on it that all these four players were in the great, the greatest 50 players of all time when the NBA did that list. And if they do another one soon, they'll probably all still be on it because they were that good. And uh, this draft class is something else. It's going to go to the finals. Well, this draft class sort of is the bookend to that era of basketball where there was a lot more physicality and the playing styles changed because you had a guy like Michael who was getting beat up by the bad boy Pistons. Uh, the Celtics had to play the Pacers a ton, I'm pretty sure, as well. Um, just so many teams he had to go through and change his game to be more physical, just tenacious. And uh, obviously, Hakeem, big man, John Stockton, more of that finesse guy because he was a guard and he was assisting. But Barkley's body type was perfect for that era of basketball. And while he never won a title, he was on plenty of really good teams. And because Michael was winning titles all the time and you had other dynasties in between there or dynasties, if you want to call them that, that, that 
that's really why he didn't win one. Sam Perkins kind of lost in the wash because, you know, like you said, you could probably win a game four on five with those top four. It, it's just no competition in that regard. But we move into then the new generation or the current generation that's slowly coming to its end as well. Um, and we'll start with the 1996 draft class, just going in, I guess, semi-chronological order, where you have, again, like NBA legends that you can't tell the story of the NBA with aren't necessarily in the hall of fame yet. Some of them are, you have Kobe Bryant in there and that 96 draft class, AI, Ray Allen, Steve Nash, Jermaine O'Neal are those top five that we have on our graphic on CDB reviews, Instagram page, go and follow that for more info uh, interview snippets and uh, stuff on when the podcast is coming out, by the way, uh, they are down 58, 42 in the, voting right now to uh, a draft class we'll get to in the last part of this uh, short little episode. But again, that's a great draft class. Kobe was one of the hardest working basketball players anyone had ever seen. He was considered like the next MJ. Didn't necessarily have the success in title game, title series that you would expect from another MJ like player, but he was that pure scorer. He refused to lose. And that just through osmosis, reached his teammates in ways that no one could really understand. Yeah, I I think when you look at this 1996 NBA draft class, and again, as a college basketball page, we got to put the high school players in there. You can't just denote a Kobe or a LeBron, even though they didn't play in college. You've got to respect game, respect game. And I think when you look at this draft class, I think a lot of times people, we'll get to 2003 later, but a lot of times people like to compare 1984 to 2003 because they were very deep draft classes and they just so happened to include the two best players of all time. Kobe Bryant's right up there. To me, he's a top five player of all time, um, was a scorer, was a winner, and, and just did so much. And again, not even just having Kobe Bryant, but you have Ray Allen, three-point king again. Again, I know Steph Curry's a, He's the three-point king, really, but Ray Ray Allen is the three-point king as well. You you can you can make that argument. Um, Allen Iverson, not a bust at all. I mean, the first pick overall might not have won the championship, but Allen Iverson is one of the great players we've had in NBA history. Um, he crossed up MJ. Let's not forget that. And then I want to go further, and I'm going to say them out of order here, but Sharif Abdur Rahim. Um, drafted to the Vancouver Grizzlies was a guy who was an all-star. He was one of the great players in the league for a while. Stephon Marbury, everyone remembers him. Antoine Walker, he had some big moments. Peja Stojakovic, I mean, he was one of the best, you know, stretch forward shooters in the NBA before it really became a thing. Um, And then you've got Steve Nash. I mean, I should have mentioned him earlier because Steve Nash is one of the better point guards we've had, a a two-time MVP Steve Nash. I decided to include Jermaine O'Neal on this list over Stojakovic, um, over Marbury. I could have gone with any of them. It was just so happened. I'll go with Jermaine O'Neal. You know, there's really no wrong answer there. And then Zdranis Ogalskis. I mean, people laugh and they like to say, oh, he was second fiddle on that LeBron team that LeBron miraculously took to the NBA Finals. But Zdranis Ogalskis was still a good basketball player. I mean, sure, he was not the typical, the prototypical second guy um, to help lead a team to a championship, but it's a guy that averaged 13 and seven for his NBA career over 10,000 points. That's not shabby at all. He had seasons that were obviously higher than that 13 point a game year. So when you look at that draft class as a whole, and there's a lot of good players. I'd also like to mention real quick that this is the first draft class where we have somebody, at least in the bracket, this final four that we have somebody who went mainstream for things he was doing off the court away from the sport of basketball. And I, of course, am talking about Kobe Bryant with the fact that he was big into producing. He won, it was an Emmy, I think, was what he won, right? For um, Dear Basketball, his uh, short film. Yes, still about basketball, but away from the court. Also growing the women's game through his daughter, uh, rest in peace to uh, obviously Kobe and Gigi, um, but growing the women's game with that, just trademark orange hoodie. Uh, yes, you're raising your hand. Why are you raising your hand? This is not a class. Yeah, I just I just want to continue before we go on to 2003 because if people don't realize how, and again, thank you for pointing that out about Kobe and what he's done off the court, you know, obviously before his tragic death. Marcus Camby was a part of this draft class. Carrie Kittles and, um, excuse me while I find it, Derek Fisher. 
I mean, those are three other players who averaged double digit points in the NBA. Didn't make all stars per se, but those were some good players that were on winning teams. And wow, this draft class was loaded. It was, it was, but they also run into a buzzsaw in their uh, semifinal appearance. And that's the 2003 draft class. I think this may have been the last draft class to allow high school players to jump straight to the NBA. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, The headliner, of course, being LeBron. Um, So, yeah, when you have LeBron in your draft class, it's going to be up there, especially in this day and age. When, again, you have an athlete who is more than an athlete, has built his own school, is building his brand in L.A., making a second space jam. Who knows how that's going to go, but it – he has been more than basketball. Dwayne Wade, one of his best friends, a charismatic figure, not the most imposing physically, but did what he had to do and was a major player on a couple championship teams. Mello, still kicking. Well, not, not this year because they're out of the playoffs, but he's still kicking. He's found a spot in Portland, and he's probably going to play another at least three years, you'd think, maybe four, something like that. I'd say two, three, yeah. Chris Bosh, who was a role, like went to Toronto, was a good player for them, became a role player, won a couple championships. And then you have a guy like David West, who just found himself on teams and played a significant role uh, to help them win championships, uh, notably with Golden State. Uh, He was with Indiana for a long time before that, though. It it's a solid draft class at the top. And then, as you said, just deep throughout. Yeah, and to correct the the answer, 2005, just two years off on that. So that was good, though. I, I was going to say 2007, so we were we were going both ways on that one. Um, but to be fair, I think a good idea that they stopped it in 05 because some of the high schoolers out of that one, and respect to Monte Ellis and Lou Williams, but we don't really need another Andrew Bynum in our draft class. Um, so I'll leave it at that. But I'm not going to lie. I think the 1996 draft was a little bit deeper. Um, It's just at the top here with LeBron, with Dwayne Wade, Carmelo. I mean, first off, with LeBron and Melo, this might be the only draft class where you have two players, both in the top 10 in scoring history. I don't believe there's another draft class that's had that. Dwayne Wade was close enough. I mean, he had more than 20,000 points. And if Chris Bosh didn't have to stop playing because of his unfortunate health issues, he probably would have been over 20,000 as well because he was a hooper in Toronto. And then again, um, I, I included David West because he was a guy that I thought, you know, he, I mean, he was pretty big on some of those Pacers teams. There was no denying that he was a tough player, but a few of the other guys, Kirk Heinrich, TJ Ford made a little bit of time with Indiana. Um, you had Nick Collison. I mean, he played in the NBA for a while. Kyle Corver was an NBA player for quite some time. Boris Diaw was a guy that got better as he aged. I mean, he was 33, and he was better than when he was 24. Um, And then the infamous Kendrick Perkins, um, the international Leandro Barbosa. You had Josh Howard. You had Luke Walton. I'm just naming off names at this point. Um, Mo Williams was a late-round pick at 47th. I think that's the point being made is that this 03 draft – Again, I think 96, if you run through the top five players, 03 might have the better top five players. If you ran through the top eight, I think 1996 wins there just because they had a few better players in that category. If you go through the top 15 players, and I know I'm I'm picking between here, I think 03 would win that category. I think you just look at the overall draft and they have the best of the best. They have some other great players and they had a lot of role players that were in the NBA for quite some time. It'd be interesting to see what team you could field with the top 15 from each draft class. That's how many people dress for an NBA game uh, on the average. So it'd be great to see that. Maybe that's something we do uh, later this summer. Take these four draft classes, draft a 15 person team um, based on like, I guess, modern NBA rotations. I don't know. Or maybe we have a certain number of minutes for each player. Uh, Interesting to see who would uh, win that because while you do have MJ and Barkley on that, 84 draft class you have like a LeBron, Melo, and Dwayne Wade on the uh, the 03 draft class. But uh, it seems like a foregone conclusion, and this is where every NBA debate goes. This is where every NBA topic really goes uh, because it is a foregone conclusion. We're going to be seeing the 84 draft class up against the 03 draft class in our 
mock final, this bracket we've been doing in tandem with NBA Draft Central. Great page. Go check them out. They do great stuff over there uh, covering the NBA, just like we do with college basketball. That's why it works so well, guys. Cooperation is key. And one cannot live without the other unless you're the NBA G League and think that you can just tear the whole thing apart. But uh, it's coming down to Jordan, I'm sure, is carrying the 84 draft class. LeBron is carrying the 03 draft class. So yet again, it is another debate that makes no sense because errors are so different and they're playing against varying levels of competition. And when you dive really deep into the stats, you can be like, oh, well, Jordan lost in the first round like four times and LeBron just lost in the first round for the first time this year. It's, it, it's a debate that will have no end. I'm sure in like 200 years, people will be saying, oh, well, I didn't watch either of these guys play, but I think LeBron was better because of this. But it, it, is it even a debate worth having at this point, Matt, especially since the eras were so different? I still think to a point because – when you look at baseball or football, it's really tough to decide goats because there's so many positions and basketball has kind of always been a positionalist sport to a point. I think at this era, it's probably the most it's ever been, but even back then it wasn't like Michael Jordan was purely a shooting guard. I mean, he, he still would take the ball to court. Sometimes he might've played small forward a few times. It just wasn't as much or as notable, but to your point, I, I do think that, I just, I mean, I'm glad that the bracket, there were no upsets. I mean, from, from a point, it'd be cool to have upsets, but I guess we put together a good bracket. Us and NBA Draft Central just kind of listed our, our, our best 20 draft classes, and that's how we kind of seeded the brackets is, you know, weighing it between us two. Um, I just wish it wasn't down to Jordan and, and James every single time, especially in a thing like this, because – I mean, I don't think we seeded it because of those two. I really think that when you look at these draft classes, if you took out LeBron James from that draft class and you had Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony, and Chris Bosh, I still think that's a top four or five draft class of all time. If you took out Michael Jordan from that draft class and it was John Stockton, Hakeem Olajuwon, and Charles Barkley, I honestly think the only draft class that's still better than that is 1996 with Kobe Bryant. And, and I'm, I'm going to stick by that. And, and to my point, I think that's why maybe I feel like 1996 is getting a little bit um, overshadowed by LeBron James. And, and you could even say that 1984 is as well um, by Kobe Bryant and, and, all, all, and all of that. I think it kind of intertwines in a way. I do think that those are the three best draft classes of all time. Um, and that's just the way it's played out. But, you know, It'd be interesting. We've had some close battles. We've also had some blowouts. And it'll be interesting to see once we get to that championship because, and again, we won't know until later tonight, but I'm willing to bet it will be 84 against 03. Well, after tonight, and I believe this will be posted tomorrow, uh, is when the final voting will take place for the final. Um, as of right now, looks like it will be the class of 1984 going up against the class of 03. We're going to look forward now, though, uh, into the next couple of weeks, because while we are doing this bracket, there is a much more important bracket going on uh, in the NBA, that being the NBA playoffs. And before we say goodbye here on uh, this CBB Review summer session, whatever you want to call it, um, let's get your thoughts, Matt, on how the NBA playoffs went first round wise. The last game of the first round is actually tonight. Uh, game seven, Clippers, Mavericks. Uh, but then round two has started already. We have the Sixers and Hawks going out tonight, actually this afternoon in about an hour and a half. So uh, I will be missing that because I have an internship to go to. But what were your thoughts on the first round of the NBA playoffs this year? I honestly thought that it was one of the worst first rounds that we've had in a while. I mean, only one game seven isn't great. And it was a game seven that I don't think we all, like we weren't like counting on it going to a game seven. It's been a good series, but I mean, you know, the Clippers had to force that game seven. Um, and then when you look at it after that, there really haven't been many moments of buzzer beaters. Damian Lillard's had the best moment so far with his 55 points and multiple game tying threes. But there haven't really been a lot of close games. I feel like it's been more blowouts than even games ending in single digits. I mean, I'm not saying games ending down to the wire. I'm saying games that have been six points, seven point games. I feel like there's been more 15, 20 point games than that. 
Um, to be fair, though, I'm looking forward to the rest of the, to the rest of these playoffs. Um, I had the after the Bucks swept the Heat, the Bucks were kind of my favorite to win the title. After the Nets beat them in Game One with James Harden only playing one minute. I think the Nets might be the favorite, and I think they kind of always have been, but I kind of like to look at what the Bucs did against the Heat and say, hey, maybe they could take down the Nets. But right now, to be honest, I think it's whoever comes out of that matchup. Well, like you said, Harden is out right now, and Bede for the Sixers is dealing with that knee issue. And then you have the West, which is just – I don't know what to think of it. You have Phoenix in there, Denver in there. Uh, You're either going to have the Clippers who are notoriously bad uh, in the postseason, whether it's early or late or the Mavericks. And then you have, why is this team eluding me? Uh, The Jazz, did I say the Jazz already? The Jazz, yeah. Yeah, that's, those are the four. It's, it's not what you would expect. You could potentially have four like mid-level, like irrelevant markets otherwise um, in the eyes of the nation competing for a chance to go to the NBA finals and we, and they've been looking for that chance for a while. It's you had golden state there for a while. It was just a given to get in. Houston was always a threat. They were terrible this year after Harden left and they traded everybody away. And now it's teams that have played solid defensively fundamentally and have gotten savvy veterans to come in. And it's a changing of the guard in the West. It looks like because the Lakers are getting old, uh, that's really it. The Lakers are getting old. And then you have like the guys who are just always there, like Portland and all that good stuff. It's going to be an interesting rest of the playoffs. And I truly think that if we do get some moments, it's going to be some of these young stars and uh, the young stars may be uh, pushing us towards a new draft class tournament because there's some of these draft classes that have been recent that didn't make the cut, and they'll be there in a few years as some of the best classes. Well, we will keep an eye out for that. It's 1130 here on the East Coast, and we're going to go ahead and close up shop before the NBA playoffs tip off today. Keep it here on cbbreview.com or the YouTube page where this will be going up for more content like this over the course of the summer, and stay tuned for uh, dates on when season one episodes will be re-uploaded, uh, newer, better, fresher on uh, all the platforms we're planning on getting them on, including hopefully Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor, and then obviously the video version on YouTube. Uh, for now, though, that is Matt Majinski. I am Brendan Hodges. Thanks for tuning in to uh, this update on the R Draft Brackets in tandem with NBA Draft Central. Keep it locked in on both of those Instagram pages and I believe Twitter as well. Uh, to vote for who you think is the best draft class of all time as of right now. Uh, It'll be between the 84 and 03 draft because of what we talked about earlier. But enjoy the rest of your weekend, ladies, gentlemen, however you want to be called. Enjoy the rest of the NBA playoffs. And we look forward to seeing you again when when the review picks up for season two later this fall.